Hello everybody and welcome to our live session. This week we are celebrating breastfeeding week which means we will discuss about all the benefits of breastfeeding and to discuss that we have with us Ms. Ankita Malik. She is a CAPPA certified lactation consultant and she is also a yoga instructor for pre and postnatal yoga. Apart from that she is associated with multiple hospitals in Calcutta uh, like Medica Super Speciality, ILS Hospital, Renew and she has a varied uh, client base and a very long experience doing this. So we will speak to her and get to know exactly what she does and what her feedback is on this breastfeeding week. So ma'am welcome to the live. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me a part of your live and it's, it's a real pleasure to be a part of uh, you know the Sunrise Breastfeeding Week uh, event uh, program and uh, so a little bit about myself is that I am a lactation consultant and I have been practicing uh, since from the last about five years ever since I gave birth to my son because I realized that you know we have a dearth of lactation consultants in uh, especially in our city and uh, I just wanted to be someone who makes a difference so you know, it's, I'm very passionate about what I do and I really enjoy what I do. So that's, that's about me. Uh, Ma'am, just wanted to ask, uh, where are you based out of and uh, uh, your client base, how large is the client base? Like if you're, are you doing it only from the city you're based out of or are you have, do you have a pan-India approach in your practice? Uh, actually, why pan-India now? You know, I have a global approach towards the practice because, you know, we uh, thanks to the pandemic, it taught us how to work online and, uh, you know, uh, uh, digitally and virtually. So, uh, in fact, I did a, uh, did, a, did a lot of global consultations through, um, you know, the, uh, the lockdown yeah, that we had the last couple of years. Uh, of course, basically my client base is in uh, Kolkata because that's where I'm based out of. But yes, there are a lot of two-tier cities which don't have lactation consultants, which I am very happy to reach out to. That's why, you know, like places like Raipur and Siliguri, etc. I, I do have, um, you know, I have my associations there as well. Thank you so much, ma'am. Ma'am, we'll go to a few questions which we have regarding the breastfeeding week. So one of them is, uh, can you just let us know who exactly needs a lactation consultant and why uh, should mothers consult a lactation consultant and exactly why mothers should approach you and your services, what they include to a mother? So who needs a lactation consultant? Yes, obviously the mother-to-be or the mother who's just given birth needs a lactation consultant. But I'd also like to add, I think in today's day and age, even the family needs a lactation counseling session. So I encourage uh, pregnant women to come with their husbands a lot of time with their mother-in-laws or with their mothers to come and sit through the consultation to understand exactly and to mentally prepare themselves through the process of lactation and breastfeeding because it's a long journey ahead and for me I would want the journey not just to be successful but also to be fulfilling and enjoyable for the mother and baby diet so yeah like I encourage mothers to come to me during the third trimester itself so that a lot of issues which are otherwise prevent are preventable you know they, they crop up later on when mothers are not aware you know a lot of even anatomical issues are very easily solvable but so just to avoid that kind of a situation for the mother I always encourage them to come to me during the third trimester and in fact uh, with Dr. Rajiv Agarwal at Renew Clinic I do conduct you know bi-monthly classes where uh, all his patients they s sit with me through a session where I educate them about the whole process of breastfeeding and lactation and we I have a pediatrician as well who comes in and who speaks about newborn baby care so that you know you know what to expect and of course another one which I uh, consider extremely vital is uh, at the bedside as soon as the mother gives birth to the baby maybe in a day or two she should have access to a lactation consultant because again you know like until and unless you actually end up trying to breastfeed your baby when unless you're going through it you don't know what actually you're going to face and you it's very difficult to predict the kind of issues that may come up or the doubts that you may have and when you have the facility or you have the luxury to reach out to an expert in the field why not um, 
so ma'am uh, in, in terms of mother so I, i just thought of this question while you were answering if an expecting mother is seeing a doctor or a gynae uh, do they have to contact you through the gynae or can they directly get in touch with you for a consultation either or they are most welcome to get in touch with me through uh, you know if whether they want to get in touch with me through the gynec or the pediatrician it's up to them or whether they want to get in touch with me directly that that also works very well both are okay with me i do have uh, you know i i am working with a few doctors across the city and generally it's it's very uh, it's it's very good to be a part of the team you know when there is a supporting gynecologist as well as a pediatrician because ultimately we have a common goal to collectively take care of the mother and the baby so it works much better and communication is much clearer if i am a part of the team but yes uh, i i have my presence on google and on instagram and i have a lot of people who reach out to me uh, you know just as is without uh, any sort of a referral and uh, you know we touch wood we have a very high success rate So I'm coming to the main uh, agenda of the week which is breastfeeding. Uh why is breast milk considered liquid gold? Can you just give us a brief about what it is and why it is such a sought after thing? Absolutely, that's my job, right? <laughs> so uh breast milk come on like you know that is the only food that a newborn baby is given. So all these world organizations like the WHO and you know we all have been talking time and time again about the importance of breastfeeding and how important it is for an infant to be exclusively breastfed immediately after birth there has to be something to it so uh technically speaking from the time the child is born till the ti- time the child is 6 months old the child only and only needs breast milk to s- survive and as well as, as to thrive you know they it is more than enough for growth and development because it has everything it has all the nutrients it has enough fats proteins hormones whatever the child needs for it to grow and for it to develop in the most optimum possible way the magical thing about breast milk is that it is customized as per the individual baby's needs so if i have given birth my breast milk will be most aptly suited for my baby so ultimately babies are human beings and every baby has a different need so my milk is customized for my baby like your milk will be customized for your baby's needs and it keeps changing so you know formula is like 0 to 3 months 3 to 6 months 6 to 12 months that's how it works but where breast milk is concerned like the consistency and the composition will change right now when i feed my baby and after 2 hours if i'm feeding my baby it may have a completely different composition depending if of on the child's needs and no formula in the world can boast of having antibodies the way breast milk can because bre- antibodies are the infection fighting agents which are there in breast milk so that is like literally your child's first immunization the first vaccination that your baby gets another very very key aspect towards uh, breast milk is that uh, it has essential bacteria to line your gut so when you are born you are born without that bacterial lining in your gut which helps you digest food you need that good bac- bacteria but this colostrum and breast milk helps to line the gut, baby's gut for effective digestion to take place and this not only helps the baby immediately after birth but much later on in life you there are so many studies which have been conducted and it it has been shown that babies who've been exclusively breastfed they have a far lesser uh, chance of developing um, you know food allergies or food intolerances and of course needless to say diseases as well like you know as long as the baby is being breastfed there are much lesser chances of the baby falling sick and even if, i mean if you have exclusively breastfed your baby for a period of time then that you are giving your child a better chance to immunity in the long run amazing okay uh, so okay we understand that now why it is called liquid gold uh, now we understand that this is of course a liquid gold for a baby does breastfeeding also help the mothers who are breastfeeding the kids I can go on about this because the benefits are numerous and even towards the mother like you said yes there are several uh, benefits towards the mother I'll just highlight a few uh, so mothers who are exclusively breastfeeding their babies they recover much quicker because what happens is every time you breastfeed your baby automatically because of the hormones being released you, there are uterine contractions which get uh, induced so uh, 
the your uterus has expanded to many times over its size to accommodate the baby now it needs to shrink back so that the rest of the internal organs can come back to place so the more the mother breastfeeds the quicker the uh, the uterus contracts back to its original shape and size and the faster the other organs are able to align themselves in a healthy way for the mother so as so you know like uh, if a mother is exclusively giving her baby formula it will take her about 3 months for her uterus to contract back to its original size but if you're exclusively be- breastfeeding you can cut down this time by half so in 6 weeks your uterus can be absolutely uh, to the original shape and position that's just one of them uh if your uterus is shrinking back then automatically your stomach is also getting flatter so all the figure conscious moms if you want to get uh, into shape faster the more you breastfeed the quicker your uterus contracts and the faster your stomach becomes flat and also you are burning a lot of calories so if you're watching your uh, diet i don't recommend really calorie counting uh i would uh, this is but you do end up losing you can end up losing a lot of weight because breastfeeding burns about 5 to 600 calories a day which is as much as a high intensity workout okay. that apart uh, exclusively breastfeeding mothers they have a much lesser chance of developing osteoporosis or breast and ovarian cancers later on in life and because every time you breastfeed there's a release of positive hormones like oxytocin automatically there are lesser chances of developing baby blues or postpartum depression so yeah that's just a few but i could go on okay okay uh, that is brilliant um so ma'am another question is uh, can you let's let our viewers know that how soon until how long a mother can breastfeed their baby so yeah so as soon as the baby is born the baby can easily be introduced to the mother's breast whether you've ha- gone through a vaginal birth or th- c section all you need to do is it's uh, better to speak to your healthcare provider beforehand and let your doctor your PD, uh, your gynecologist know uh, that you want to follow this practice most hospitals are uh, this uh, they are trained to um, help you with this kind of a thing of course this varies on the situation ultimately when during delivery itself your gynecologist and pediatrician will decide if this is a feasible option for you or your baby but in most normal cases this is the practice that we follow uh, as per who it is recommended that the baby should be exclusively breastfed right up to 6 months exclusive breastfeeding means nothing but breast milk should be fed to the baby and beyond that for a minimum of up to 2 years along with uh, supplemental solids but i have know a lot of people who have fed their babies uh, no, not babies anymore their toddlers till they are 3 3 and a half 4 years as well and there's absolutely no harm in that ultimately i feel this is the mother's prerogative it should be completely the mother's decision because you know it, it, the the mother has to take a call as per her comfort as per her situation and whatever suits her uh, needs so if if it if it works for her then please go ahead and feed for as long as possible that's the best possible thing that you can do for your child but yes a lot of times circumstances don't permit so there's no judgment there okay amazing okay. yeah um okay ma'am uh, let us talk about uh, the mothers who are working or who need to join back work because there are a lot of working women who are becoming mothers um now of course since they are joining back work or they are working it is difficult for them to stay with the baby the whole time and breastfeed them how do they ensure that their breast milk is available because it's liquid gold it's available for their babies it's uh, i mean i have so many women coming to me every other day telling me that they want to resume work or they want to start working or they are nervous during pregnancy that you know we are working women and how do we get back to work honestly it's it sounds very overwhelming but it's very very doable with a little bit of planning you know nowadays in fact you know society has progressed so much you know I- even in india we are following uh, we are following the west in a positive way where the maternity leave from 3 months has been extended to 6 and a half months which is amazing right so that itself makes you very comfortable because once uh, your child is 6 6 and a half months your child is going to start solids and then by the time the child is 1 year old your child is primarily going to be on solids a lot of workplaces across the city across the country 
they are very pro uh, new moms as well there are nursing rooms there are private and even if there are not allotted r- nursing uh, areas uh, most places most um, offices are very compliant and are very supportive towards new moms and they provide a space where the mother can feed her baby or she can pump or whatever she needs to do having said that yes there are a lot of places which are not as compliant or it's not always possible it's not feasible but then we have the luxury of breast pumps so all you need to do is invest in a good quality breast pump which it, it breast pumps are portable and uh, take advice from your lactation consultant and draw up a feasible uh, lack, uh, breastfeeding schedule all you need to do is just do that just carry your pump with you have um, you know carry storage bottles or containers along with you know if you have a, a refrigerator available in your workplace well and good if not you can just buy an ice box or you know those bags which have blue ice and everything it's very convenient and not even that pricey anymore right okay all right um so ma'am uh, since you spoke about breast pumps uh, are breast pumps safe since uh, of course you know in india there's a stigma attached to using breast pumps uh, could you say a little bit more about the utilization of breast pumps and if it is safe or not for mothers absolutely i i also am a woman of today i'm also a working mother and i have gone through this cycle myself and i think during my journey of breastfeeding and lactation my best friend was my uh, pump because it makes life so much more easy you know when you don't have your pump with you and everywhere you cannot take your baby you know you're always living in guilt in any case i think all mothers as soon as they give birth they have this guilt hormone which just kicks in i don't know why but i think uh, it's a great option and when an option of convenience is available to you as a woman of today i would completely encourage women to you know avail of it why not there's no harm in it of course anything can be uh, you know if if it's not used properly it can harm but it, uh, at the breast pumps which are available in the market they are relatively very very easy to use and any lay person can use it and if you need help you always have experts available to you for advice right. so if you use it systematically there's absolutely no uh, problem and there's no issue at all okay. all right um so ma'am uh, staying in the arena of breast pumps uh, can you let us know who exactly can use breast pumps uh, uh, would you recommend it to all mothers or only the working mothers or exactly which mothers should be opting for breast pumps it's a completely a personal choice okay. if a mother if uh, you, it also depends on why you want to use the breast pump breast pump is not just used for the purpose of uh, you know storing milk d- in order to you know like i i'm i've gone to office so let me uh, you know withdraw the milk and then i can store it and then when i go home i can feed my baby it's it just doesn't work like that what if you have a social obligation what if you just want to take a break what if uh, you know a lot of times we encourage mothers uh, to use breast pumps in the case of premature babies in the case uh, where cases where babies are in the nicu or scubu when they are separated from the mother uh, a lot in covid times it was used far and wide also a lot of times uh, with the practice to induce lactation or uh, to increase uh, the rate of lactation so anyone can use it it depends on you what would you say are the benefits of using a breast pump there are so many first and foremost you can uh, you know you uh, you have to in a very systematic way you can sit down and you can uh, draw out the milk and uh, it it's not dependent on any human factor it's a machine so you know there's no mood there's no sleeping there's no drowsiness there's no crying all you need to do is pick up the pump plug it in and use it to uh express your milk okay. also it's extremely portable so if you're out and you know uh, new moms who've just about started their journey of lactation a lot of them complain of engorgement when they are unable to empty out their breasts in time so at, you know at this point in time your breast milk can really be of help you know you can prevent engorgement in circumstances where it is not possible for you to immediately feed your baby also yes through the night you know you can keep getting up in intervals and pumping for the sake of convenience it's a very very convenient option when you're traveling when and uh, for working mothers it's an absolute life saver you know we all you know nowadays 
women are also uh, you know breadwinners for the house and uh, the income of the man and the women both you know they it uh, they both run the house so it's very important uh, for if for a working woman why should she lose her independence and especially when they have an option of pumping mm-hmm. right right so yeah, yeah so that's okay. Ma'am, uh, breast milk, if it is stored, is it healthy for babies? Like stored milk after pumping, is it still healthy for the babies? Yes, if it is, if it is stored uh, correctly, it is absolutely healthy for your child. If you're serving, uh, if you're uh, going to um, uh, store it in a plastic uh, container, make sure that it's BPA. Uh, great plastic it is uh, 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 your or your st- uh, your storing it in a sterilized container um, there are certain timelines which you need to keep in mind that you know in, f- in room temperature about 6 to 8 hours in the fridge about 3 days in the freezer about 2 weeks and if you have a commercial grade f- uh, freezer about 6 months you can right. c- you can easily store it and also yeah you have to be responsible do please smell or taste the breast milk before you feed the baby ultimately this is organic matter and it can spoil it can get rancid so it's always better to taste it or smell it before giving it to your child store it in a clean hygienic effective way direct heat is not advised so you know we use the double boiler method or we use bottle warmers to heat the breast milk we never use it should never be very hot like if you are if you put your if you if you've kept your breast milk at room temperature i don't suggest you really don't need to heat it it's all right nice okay um so ma'am now i would request if you can uh, for our audience who have not used breast pumps but are planning to um, if you can maybe just demonstrate how to use it so this is an example of a manual breast pump it's relatively very very easy to use So as you can see this is the flange and this is exactly where uh, you know you place it on the mother's breast this is made of silicone so it's very very comfortable just make sure that the nipple comes bang in the center and you make a vacuum seal since it is silicone it can easily get vacuum sealed make sure you have a good grip and you just use this handle to pump it's that easy the milk get trickles into this bottle all you need to do once you're once uh, the you know you manage to express out the adequate amount you just remove it and you pour it into whichever container you want to feed the baby through and this can easily be washed and sterilized similarly we even have uh, electric pumps which are like this Uh, the the it's it the structure is somewhat similar it has a flange and it has a bottle attached but instead of this handle out here there, there you'll find two pipes which are connected to uh, like a little uh, you know like a uh, like a little monitor which can be get plugged in or it can be battery operated so in those cases you won't need to f- use the handle to w- withdraw the milk you can just plug it in and you can attach the flange to the mother's breast and automatically milk will get expressed So ma'am we have a few viewers questions which have come into us and we would love for you to answer a few. Uh the first question being uh, about breast pumps actually. So this lady has asked uh, breast shields that are she uses are very uncomfortable and uh, she has asked if there is any way she can avoid such discomfort. uh breast shields are generally uh, which are available in the market they are made of silicon so they should be comfortable ideally they should not be uncomfortable so you can get in touch with us and we can provide you with a comfortable shield and uh, maybe it's not of your size maybe you know uh, there's a problem with uh, the size so that also needs to be sorted out uh, ideally for using any kind of shield or any kind of external product you should be uh, taking a consultation from a lactation specialist so basically anybody who has this issue please contact ankita ma'am uh, her contact details will be available uh, below the vin- video in the description box you can get in touch with her or you can get in touch with her through us um, ma'am the second question is um, uh this lady has asked uh, after feeding my baby i have excess milk which he rejects to drink uh what can i do in such a situation that's a, a very rare phenomena because I- I- in our country we are struggling most of the mothers are struggling with the milk supply so if you are one of the blessed few who have excess supply please don't hesitate to donate your milk to someone who needs it or get in touch with us we'll be happy to help we will help you 
donate your milk to a milk bank where a mother or a child who really need it will uh, have access to it. Um, so ma'am, the last question uh, is uh, using breast pump a safe practice and something you would recommend? Absolutely, using a breast pump is a safe uh, uh, practice because you are encouraging the child to have breast milk over formula milk, right? The best possible nu nutrition that you can give your child is by giving the child breast milk. So when, uh, you know, when you're not able to directly breastfeed for any reason, you know, maybe you are separated from your child for a brief period of time or you've stepped out or due to some illness or whatever XYZ reason. The first uh, reflex is to just, you know, make formula and to feed the baby. But when you have uh, a breast pump available to you, you really don't need to do that. You can just express your milk and feed your child. And it's completely safe. Uh, you know, you have hospital grade pumps which are available in the hospital where when after you deliver, your, the nurses and your lactation consultants will assist you and they will guide you on how to use the pumps. And the regular ones which are available in the market are for lay women. They are for mothers who are delivering every day. So it's completely safe. And all of these products are licensed products. They've all gone through, uh, you know, a series of testing and uh, they're all approved. So there's no harm in using it. When in doubt, always better to reach out to your healthcare provider or your lactation consultant and they'll be able to guide you how to use it. Okay. So thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, we would end the interview here. Uh, it has been an amazing pleasure to have you on here. We look forward to getting to know you more and you helping out all our viewers. Completely my pleasure. It's been an absolute delight to be associated with your brand and to have a conversation with you. I think it's a wonderful initiative that you guys have come up with to educate women about breastfeeding and lactation. And thank you so much for making me a part of it. Thank you.